Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this Organic Chemistry Lab video covers a Grignard reaction experiment. This is part two, forming the Grignard reagent, phenylmagnesium bromide. The first thing we'll do in this experiment is prepare a calcium sulfate drying tube. Calcium sulfate is a desiccant. It absorbs water, which is important in keeping the Grignard reagent dry. We're gonna to top our apparatus with one of these drying tubes to help prevent moisture from getting in and reacting with our Grignard reagent. This bottle contains two kinds of dry right. Dry right is a commercial version of calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate is a white solid, but some of it has an indicator in it that's blue when it's good and can absorb moisture, and red when it's depleted and can't absorb more moisture. And then it's purple when it's somewhere in between. I've poured some of that dry right into a beaker to make it easier to load into the dry tube in a little bit. In our case the drying tube is a plastic tube that has a cap which I'll pluck off here. Then I'll take a bit of glass wool, wad it into a ball, and stuff it into the drying tube into the tip with the bulb. I'd recommend wearing gloves when handling glass wool. If you don't wear gloves you can get slivers and they are unpleasant. Here I'm using a piece of wire to tap the glass wool into the tip but you can use whatever you have available. Actually a pencil or pen would work really well too. I just need to put enough glass wool into the drying tube to make sure that the drying agent doesn't fall out of the end. Now I'll pour the drying agent in and fill it up to about a quarter of the way to a third of the way full. You could fill it up to the top, but that's more than we need for this experiment. Once I have the drying agent in the tube, I'll put another wad of glass wool on top of that, tamp it down like before, and then put the top back on the drying tube. Now I've got a drying tube I can use in the experiment. The indicator is either blue or purple, which means it's good to go. If you get a drying tube and it looks like this, where all the indicator is red, you need to change the drying agent. Next I'll be weighing out the magnesium metal. It comes supplied as turnings, which are little shavings that will be easy to weigh out. I'm going to be weighing the magnesium on a watch glass today instead of using one of the plastic weigh boats. The humidity in the lab is really low today and the plastic boats tend to accumulate a lot of static electricity, which causes the magnesium to kind of fly around when you try to weigh it out, and that can be really frustrating. I'll need to add 0.60 grams of ground magnesium, and I'm weighing out a little more than that here, 0.70, because I'm anticipating losing a little bit in the grinding process. The point of grinding the magnesium is to shine it up, exposing fresh metal surface. The Grignard reagent forms at the surface of the magnesium, and having fresh metal exposed is important in getting the reaction to go. Don't expect to powderize the magnesium, that'll never happen. Just shine it up, and crush the chunks a little bit if you can. Now I'll weigh out 0.60 grams of this ground magnesium to put in the reaction mixture. I'll be using a 50 milliliter round bottom flask to carry out today's reaction. The Grignard reaction is very sensitive to moisture. Some procedures will even have you oven dry your glassware ahead of time or flame dry it. I found that that's not necessary, but it is important that there not be any visible water present on any of your glassware. Make sure that you don't wash your glassware with water ahead of the Grignard reaction immediately before doing this Grignard experiment. It's better to have dirty glassware than to have wet glassware. Next I'll be weighing out 3.25 grams of bromobenzene. I'm weighing it into a small beaker here because I'm going to make a solution of ether in a little bit and because the plastic weighing boats dissolve in bromobenzene, so don't use a plastic weigh boat to weigh this material out. Now I'll be adding 10 milliliters of ether to dissolve the bromobenzene and make a solution. Remember that ether is very volatile and flammable. It's also important in this reaction that the ether be dry. This can of ether contains very little water, which is important for the Grignard reagent because it's very sensitive to moisture. I'll pour out 10 milliliters of ether into the graduated cylinder. Then I'll make sure I put the cap back on the ether to keep this ether dry. And I'll pour the ether into the beaker containing the bromobenzene to make a solution and give it a little swirl. Then I'll cover the solution with a watch glass to keep it from evaporating. Now it's time to assemble the reaction apparatus. I'll start by clamping the flask with the magnesium to a ring stand. Then I'll take a U-shaped adapter, this is often called a Claisen adapter, and I'll put that into the flask. This will adapt the flask to allow us to plug in two things. One of the things I'll plug in is a condenser, and I'll stick that into the hole that's offset. Then I'll clamp the condenser to the ring stand to stabilize the apparatus. The bottom hose of the condenser is the water inlet, that goes to the faucet, and the top hose of the condenser is the water outlet, that goes to the drain. Now I'm going to plug the separatory funnel into the other open port on the U-shaped adapter. This separatory funnel is going to get used as an addition funnel. It's going to allow us to add bromobenzene solution a little bit at a time. Now I'll take the thermometer adapter and plug the drying tube into it through the rubber boot. This will allow me to connect the drying tube to the top of the apparatus as shown here. Now I'm pouring the bromobenzene solution in ether 
into the separatory funnel to allow me to add it slowly to the magnesium in the flask below. Next, I'm adding a little bit of the solution of bromobenzene and ether, just enough to cover the magnesium turnings in the bottom of the flask. This is enough reagent to get the Grignard reagent formation reaction started. Once that reaction is going, I'll add the rest of the solution. To help initiate the formation of the Grignard reagent, I'll be adding two drops of 1,2-dibromoethane. This reagent reacts with magnesium metal, exposing fresh magnesium surface, allowing the Grignard reagent formation reaction to start more easily. I'll just remove the addition funnel temporarily and add two drops of the 1,2-dibromoethane down the hole. Make sure that the drops actually fall into the solution and don't get hung up on the side of the glassware. Now I'm shaking the apparatus a little bit to stir everything up. Now we watch and wait for the Grignard reagent to start forming. You'll be able to tell something is happening because you'll see kind of a white or gray cloudiness develop in the solution, which will eventually give way to a yellow and brown color. You may also see bubbles forming on the magnesium, which is the exothermic reaction occurring and boiling the ether solvent. That boiling will become vigorous once the reaction has really started. Watch the reaction at room temperature for about five minutes or so and look for any evidence that it's started. If you don't see any cloudiness in that time, we'll have to get a little bit more aggressive in trying to get the reaction started. I'm going to try heating the reaction mixture to initiate the Grignard formation reaction. I have started the condenser water flowing. I've gotten a variable transformer and turned it on and turned it to about 30%. And I have a heating mantle here that I'll put on the bottom of the reaction mixture to get the heating started. The reaction solution is now boiling, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the reaction has started. It might just be that the heating mantle is making the ether boil. So I need to remove the heating mantle periodically and look inside the flask and look for that cloudiness that I described. Also, I'm going to look for a boiling that's self-sustained when I remove the heating mantle. When I see those things, I'll know that the Grignard formation reaction has started. I'm not seeing any evidence here that the Grignard formation reaction has started, so I'm going to resume heating for a bit longer. I've been heating the reaction for at least five minutes now and I still don't see any evidence that the Grignard reagent is forming. So I'm going to need to go to the next step here and use an ultrasonic cleaning bath to help agitate the reaction mixture and get that reaction started. Sonication gets materials moving really well and does a great job of initiating Grignard reagent formations. Here you can see some bubbling due to boiling ether and a cloudiness developing in the reaction mixture almost immediately. So I'll remove the ultrasonic bath and you can see the reaction starting to boil on its own. Now that the initiation reaction has started, I'll add the rest of the bromobenzene and ether solution from the addition funnel in a couple of portions. The bubbling may slow down temporarily, but it'll pick back up again. And you'll end up with a rolling boil like this where you see more of the yellow and brown color developing. Here's a side view of the reaction boiling under its own heat. And here you can see ether condensing and dripping back into the vessel. Notice here I have the addition funnel stopcock closed. That keeps ether from escaping out of the apparatus. The reaction should boil for about 15 minutes under its own heat, and then the reaction will slow down, peter out, and look something like this. The formation of phenyl magnesium bromide is now complete. Stay tuned for the next video in the series where I add this Grignard reagent to CO2 and make a new carbon-carbon bond on the way to forming benzoic acid. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.